Okay, we're back. Hi, everyone. Uh, we are continuing the Steven Seagal RPG. This is a brand new one. I've, um, well, first off, I bought a new headset, so hopefully my voice sounds better. Uh, and then secondly, I have revamped my uh, Seagal scenario. This is what we've changed. So it's now called Attack Force based on his, my, by far my favorite movie is Seagal's, his worst movie. And up there with Kill Switch, and then Steven Seagal parody RPGs. So um, these are, I added a few more of the list here. The Quarks to Seagal, kind of refined with the description of the Quarks. And then uh, try to keep the little author's note here. Then I added new uh, story cards. So five factions, five classes, five locations. And five races they're all kind of mixed in together they're all mostly the same you know we got fart right here and then there's nuts somewhere there's nuts right there with a few uh, new ones and uh yeah that's really it so this is how it starts this is the uh description the starting sum summary it says you are steven seagal's character in his next mega blockbuster hit movie as the adventure starts seagal is on air force one flying back to texas after having a top secret meeting with the United Nations where he solved climate change and world hunger. After two hours in his, into his flight, he destroyed the only working bathroom and went back to his aisle seat. While observing the emergency exit, he spots a suspicious passenger looking back at him. The suspicious passenger. So that's where the AI kicks in. The suspicious passenger, a man in a dark suit and sunglasses, catches Seagal's eye, quickly looks away, but not before Seagal notices a strange bulge under his jacket. Seagal's military training kicks in and knows immediately that something is off. Without hesitation, Seagal rises from his seat and approaches the man, uh, the, his overcoat and multiple legs of clothing, or swaying it in each step. All right, so let's say while Seagal steps away from his seat, the seat belt is stuck onto Seagal's leather jacket. As Seagal approaches the suspicious passenger, the seatbelt attached to his left jacket pulls taut, causing him to stumble slightly. The man in the dark suit looks up at Seagal approaches, his hand resting on the bulge under the jacket. Seagal ignores the seatbelt and he's a little closer. <laughs> his overcoat will wear the clothing rustling in each step. Excuse me, sir. All right, then, uh, while Seagal... Let's see. As Seagal approaches... The mysterious man, the seatbelt finally gives out, gives out its snaps, flying towards the mysterious man and knocks him out. Cold. The man collapses onto the floor before Seagal could have. <laughs> said anything more <laughs> gotta go uh make a gun style humor here so as seagal approaches let's see seagal looks down at the unconscious man a mixture of surprise and disappointment on his face he had hoped to interrogate him not <laughs> seagal doesn't let this setback deter, uh, deter him he quickly bends down and searches the man's pockets pulling out a small strange looking device the device Seagal finds is simply an old <laughs> Game Boy, <laughs> Game Boy. <laughs> uh, currently turned on with the Tetris cartridge. Uh, can I spell a cartridge? Inside. <laughs> Seagal equates to the Game Boy, squints at the game while holding it up to get a better look. He mumbles to himself, trying to make sense of the situation. Suddenly, the plan hits turbulence, causing Seagal to stumble. He drops the Game Boy, but quickly catches it before it can hit the ground. As he straightens up, Seagal knows as the unconscious man is starting, <laughs> starting to stir. Uh, the pilot rushes out of the cockpit towards Seagal. Oh no, rushes out of the co cockpit, yells, <laughs> We have. <laughs> <laughs> we're taking on too much weight. We're taking on too much weight. The plan, the plane can't handle, <laughs> can't hold itself. 
together like it's a boat or something. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is too good. Seagal looks at the pilot, then the unconscious man, then back at the pilot. He mumbles something inaudible and quickly decides on a course of action. So he grabs the unconscious man by the collar and drags him towards the emergency exit. He struggles with the heavy weight, but manages to prop the man against the door. The plane hits more turbulence, causing the passengers to press and scream. Oh my god. The pilot sees Seagal and walks up to him. Walks up to him. Taps Seagal on the shoulder. Excuse me, Mr. <laughs> Mr. President or Mr. Seagal. We could we could use your expertise or let's say we could use your help here. I know of your badass <laughs> reputation and ability to fly any known aircraft in existence. Let's see if this helps. Okay. The pilot's words seem to reach Seagal and he nods, heading to the gate heading handing the game boy to the pilot. Hold this for a sec. He then pulls out a set of pliers and from his overcoat begins to pry open the emergency exit door with the mighty effort. He manages to, what? What's going on? He manages to tear it open, reeling the vast sky outside. The plan shakes finally and Seagal struggles over his head. Wait, why is Seagal opening the emergency exit? <laughs> I'm so confused right now. Is he trying to get rid of the guy that is causing the, the overweight? <laughs> the, the pilot screams, Mr. Seagal, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? I just like using the story one. Seagal ignores the pilot's panic question and with a grunt, hoists the unconscious man up and tosses him out of the plane. <laughs> The man disappears into the sky, and Seagal turns to the pilot. <laughs> he was too heavy for the plane to handle. I had to make a tough call. The pilot looks shocked, but Seagal just shrugs and walks back to his seat, leaving the Game Boy behind. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> While the emergency door is still open, and instant people start <laughs> flying out <laughs> and screaming. Seagal struggles <laughs> to buckle himself in, but forgot <laughs> the buckle <laughs> broke off. Broke off. The pilot uh, runs up <laughs> to go. The pilot attempts to close the emergency <laughs> the emergency door. The co-pilot. Um, can be seen struggling to uh, fly the plane in the cockpit. Oh my gosh, this is too good. It's it's perfect start. And this and this is Air Force One, by the way. As the emergency door <laughs> remains open, terrified passengers suck toward it. Their screams piercing the air. The pilot desperately tries to... Uh, sorry, I looked away. The pilot desperately tries to close the door, but the strong wind makes it nearly impossible. Meanwhile, Seagal, still wearing his many layers of clothing, struggles to buckle his heat, but the buckle is nowhere to be found. In the cock of the cot, the co-pilot fights the, fights the same blades of plane, sweating, dripping down his forehead. The co-pilot does notice that the loss of extra weight may have helped as the plane steadies itself or let's just say levels itself out levels itself he looks back at the pilot or i should say i guess captain and shouts that he has control it's like oh meanwhile <laughs> Ignoring the pressure, the pressure change in uh, the cabin pressure, the change in cabin pressure. Hold on, is this pressure? Pressure. Legal takes out a Snickers and 
he uh, starts enjoying himself while reading a magazine. Hey, what's it called? Sky Mall magazine, I think. All right, let's see how the AI can handle this disaster of a movie. Um, the co-pilot quickly takes control of the plane and manages to stabilize it. The emergency door is still open, but the flow passengers are <laughs> slowed down. The pilot rushes back to the cockpit, looking relieved. He sees the girl still munching on his stickers and flipping this guy. Oh my, this girl, I can't thank you enough for the help. <laughs> the pilot continues. Despite the loss of dozens of innocent people, we are forever in your debt, or at least we land, <laughs> we land. <laughs> Seagal nods, still munching on the Snickers, just do my part. He then looks out the emergency egg, watching as the least less passengers are sucked out. <laughs> he sees the ground rushing up to meet them and can help but feel a pang of disappointment. <laughs> He had hoped to interrogate this vicious passenger. Now comes a mass evacuation. The cigar doesn't let this set back dear him. Oh, gosh, that's funny. All right, let's say um, the captain and co pilot. Okay, let's say um, the captain and co pilot lands the plane safely and finally manage. To close that damn door, <laughs> only three people are left on the plane, with several dozen <laughs> several missing <laughs> MIA. Seagal finishes <laughs> using the same broken bathroom and walks out. Let's see. <laughs> As the plane comes to a stop, the captain and co-pilot breathe decisively. If they turn to you, Seagal, with a mix of gratitude and apprehension, Mr. Seagal, we're glad you're safe. We had some bad news, though. We were not sure where the missing passengers have ended up. We'll be at the start of search rescue operation immediately. Oh, man. Seagal thinks that, <laughs> well, if they flew over... Seagal says thanks thanks to the bad writing all the passengers are safe and secured outside he his stunt <laughs> double took care of it <laughs> let's throw the stunt double on there for once Seagal nods confidently, even though his stunt double will actually handle the situation. Of course they are, I made sure of it. He adjusts his sunglasses and gives the captain a guard stealing glaze. As for missing passengers, I'm sure they'll turn up soon. They're probably just enjoying a bit of freedom after we just stuck out this plate for so long. <laughs> oh my god, that's too good. Oh, okay, so... Seagal Lee... Uh, oops, Seagal exits... The plane and walks down the stairs greeted by the press and massive cheers he walks up to the press the mics to talk well we'll see how he talks to a bunch of press as you step off the plane, the bright Texas sun hits your face. You can't help but squint behind your signature sunglasses. An airport is buzzing with activity, but all your eyes are on you. The press swarms around you. Cameras flashing. Microsoft swarms towards you. You take a moment to adjust your black overcoat and run from a hand through your comb back hair before stepping up to the microphone. My fellow Americans, once again, terrorism has been <laughs> defeated. <laughs> I'm just curious what happens here. He begins to address the press as mum his voice mumbled and sobbed, but the microphone picked up everywhere. My fellow Americans, once again, terrorism has been defeated. The passengers on Air Force One are safe, and a potential threat has been neutralized. <laughs> Reporters scribble furiously in the notepads trying to keep up Seagal's words. 
the president who was <laughs> never cast just yet walks in from the side crying hands Seagal a medal of honor but also <laughs> asks if he has seen his son he was last seen on the plane playing with his Game Boy. <laughs> Seagal looks at the president, confused, edged in his feet. I'm afraid I don't know who your son is, sir. Last time I saw him on the plane, but then I was a preoccupied suspicious passenger. He pauses and adds, but I'm sure he's fine. He's a smart kid, just like his father. The president nods, wiping away a tear. Ah, damn, I wish the AI was going to play with that a little bit more, but that's pretty much, that was on us. Uh, so, yeah, the, the son is the guy that Seagal knocked out with his seat belt and tossed him out the plane. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. Let's see. Uh, let's do the press keep asking Seagal questions about what is wrong with his hair. <laughs> Seagal, unfazed by the question about his hair, responds, my hair is a symbol of my strength and individualism. It's a testament to my American spirit. The reporter seems satisfied. Let's <laughs> move on to the next question. Mr. Seagal, can you tell us more about the suspicious passenger you encounter on the plane? In a deep in thought. Let's do our say here. The passenger was a was a threat. He, <laughs> he or she was neutralized. <laughs> Oops. Neutralized. Let's hope we never see him or her again. <laughs> he just forgot about it. You answer the reporter's questions. Your voice mumbled and soft. The passenger was right here. She was neutralized. Let's hope we never see him again. Reporters scribble down their words, but one of the past, one of the presses you, um, but one of the presses you for more details. Can you tell us what kind of threat he posed? He shrugged your overcoat like his clothes, shifting the movement. He was holding an explosive. <laughs> you answer for his questions. You're again, as usual, your voice mumbled and soft. He was holding an explosive. Reporters scribbled down your words, but you just can tell they're skeptical. They've seen enough of you movies. They know your answers are can be unpredictable. Before they can ask any more questions, the president steps forward and, cl and clears his throat, slides in the crowd. Thank you, Mr. All right, let's see. Um, suddenly, a large uh, helicopter, large military helicopter flies above with a loudspeaker. Loudspeaker projecting. And a projecting voice, formal voice is heard. Mr. Seagal, this is Colonel let's see, uh, Benson. We need your aid. See what happens here. The caliber hovers overhead, its blades chopping through the air with a deafening roar. The voice of the loudspeaker is formal and commanding, cutting through the noise. Mr. Seagal, this is Colonel Benson. We need your aid. You look up at the helicopter, your hands shading, shading your eyes from the bright sun, Texas sun. The president looks confused and says, and mentions to Seagal, you know Colonel Benson? Yeah, we go way back. Seagal nods a hint of recognition in his eyes. Yes, I know the Colonel Benson. We have a history together. He turns back to the reporters. I'm sorry, but duty calls. I must go. He gives the president a curt nod and before starts <laughs> riding towards the helicopter, his overcoat and layers willing and behind him. The colonel shouts, grab onto the rope. A rope gets tossed 
down to Seagal. Seagal grabs the rope and attempts to climb. <laughs> slowly pulling, pulling the helicopter. We've done this joke before. The helicopter in the pre- I think yeah, the helicopter in the previous episode crashed, and exploded. But this time I'm just gonna make it where they're suddenly pulling the helicopter down several you know, towards the ground due to Seagal's whoops weight. Plenty of weight jokes. The helicopter pilot struggles to regain control as Seagal's weight threatens to pull the aircraft down. Seagal cries with the effort of climbing. He's multiple layers of clothing bunching up around him. The helicopter ascends them steadily, barely managing to avoid crashing into the ground. As Seagal finally pulls himself up and over the side of the helicopter, he gives the pilot a nod of thanks. The pilot screams at Seagal. What the? Oh, what the hell was that? <laughs> the colonel <laughs> clarifies. Don't don't worry about it. Just fly back to base. The colonel uh, taps Seagal, or I should say, the colonel shakes Seagal's hand. And smiles. It's good to see you, old friend. All right. I didn't want to crash the helicopter just yet. Seagal returns the colonel's handshake and hints a smile on his face. Good to see you too, Colonel. What's the situation? The colonel expressions turn serious. We have a hostage situation at the Texas State Capitol. Oh, great. The suspects are demanding to speak with you. Of course they are. Why wouldn't they be? <laughs> Everyone wants to speak to Seagal. Even I do. Um, Seagal nods his face, set in determined expression. Take me there. The colonel further uh, explains whoops, what they know about the uh, let's see what they know about the suspects. Uh, Colonel, the Colonel briefs you on the situation as the helicopter flies towards the Texas State Capitol. Our intel shows that there are three suspects, all heavily armed, wearing ski masks. They've taken, host, uh, they've taken hostages in the main chamber and are demanding to speak with you. As the helicopter approaches the capital, you see a chaotic scene unfolding below. Police cars from surrounding the building. Their lights flash as an officer shoot, shouting orders from their megaphones. So it all points to the top of the state capital and tells the pilot to land, land him there. Okay, the helicopter nods and expertly lands the helicopter on the roof of the state, Texas State Capitol. Seagal steps out, his overcoat and layers of clothes rustling in the wind. He's, he looks around, taking the scene. The colonel follows suit, his expression grim. Together they make their way to the edge of the roof and rapple down the main chamber for the hostage situation to take place. While Seagal walks on the roof, <laughs> the, the paneling um, the glass paneling. Let's see. I'm going to take out this part here to the edge. All right, there we go. The glass paneling below Seagal's feet starts to crack. Seagal and the colonel fall through the ceiling. Inside the chamber, the three suspects look up as they see a whale <laughs> falling above their heads. Seagull expertly <laughs> crashes, crushes the three suspects 
killing, killing them instantly. The colonel uh, is hanging <laughs> on for dear for dear life. Oops. With one hand catching a beam. All right, let's see the guy. <laughs> I can't help it. I couldn't help it at all. Seagal quickly grabs the colonel's arm and pulls him up to the safe. No, 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 no. No, that's not exact. Hold on. Did I not phrase it right? Seagal walks on the roof. The glass paneling below Seagal's feet starts to crack. Seagal and the colonel fall through the ceiling. Inside the chamber, the three suspects look up as they see a whale falling above their heads. Let's edit this one. A whale. Seagal. <laughs> falling above their he uh, their heads. That's why. Heads. Seagal expertly crushes <laughs> inadvertently crushes the three suspects, killing them instantly. The colonel is hanging out for dear life with one, one, one hand catching a beam. The colonel lands safely on a uh, on a beam above. All right, continue. As Seagal and Colonel ring in their composure, they find the suspects <laughs> beneath the rubble, unconscious and worse. The officers just look out in shock and relief. Seagal pulls him, himself out of the debris. And adjusts his sunglasses, surveying the scene. Sorry, guys, I had a knock at the door. Okay. Where was I? <clears throat> Seagal pulls himself out of, out of the debris and adjusts his sunglasses, surveying the scene with a grim expression. The colonel radios for backup. And soon the room is swarming with police officers and paramedics. <laughs> okay, that worked out pretty well. That that second rendition worked out because I just the, the few little typos I had as usual. Uh, Seagal finds one of the suspects barely alive. He grabs him by the collar. Oops, collar. And picks him up. He, uh, Seagal mumbles, who are you? Who are you? <laughs> so, the suspect currently uh, opens his eyes, looking up at Seagal with a mixture of fear and confusion. He wonders, we're just hired mercenaries, sir. We don't know who hired us, but for what they wanted, please let us go. Seagal narrows his eyes, studying the suspect carefully. After a moment, he tosses aside in concern, you're of no use to me. Ooh, I like that. The colonel walks up to Seagal and comments about his good work. Excellent work, Seagal. Besides, <laughs> besides the, the roof repair, <laughs> we, we managed to stop this from getting any worse. <laughs> okay, this is this is really really good. Um, Seagal so nods, brushing off the compound. Just do my job, Colonel. We can't let these terrorists win. The police and paramedics take over, attending to the hostages and securing the area. Seagal so and Colonel step aside, watching the scene unfold. Suddenly, Seagal's stomach grows wildly. Seagal <laughs> so looks down, embarrassed. All right. That's a good one. I did not expect that. I do like, I think so far, my favorite is the roof repair. I, just, I couldn't help it. Besides the roof repair, I <laughs> managed to stop. Perfect. All right. Now, um, the colonel questions why, who hired these, these three to get uh, Seagal's attention. Seagal thinks for a moment and then mentions the name nuts i want to see if the ai knows about the story cards i think it does but let's see if it does pull out the nuts one so 
<laughs> that didn't sound right. It pulls out the nuts, uh, which is right here. National Underground Terror Syndicate. The Colonel's eyes widen in recognition. Nuts. That's a dangerous organization, Seagal. They seem to be causing trouble all over the world. Seagal nods in agreement. His stomach is growing again. Growling again. <laughs> the Colonel looks at Seagal and goes, I think someone's hungry. Seagal nods. A sheep is expressionless. I could use a fight to eat. <laughs> The terror, the terrorists will have have to wait. I could use I could use a filling cheesesteak right now. Actually, I could use a a a Big Mac. I could use a Big Mac. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Seagal and the Colonel leave the capital, making their way to a nearby fast food restaurant. As they walk, Seagal's stomach growls loudly, and he can't help but think about food. The girl chuckles, I think someone's hungry, Seagal nods. Yeah, yes, we know. We, we've had that already. Let's edit this. Not perfect, but most of the time the AI is pretty good. Uh, let's see. They, I'm going to say McDonald's. Uh, nearby McDonald's. The colonel says he'll wait outside. The wife doesn't want me having such filth. Seagal pauses. You, <laughs> you married her. Seagal continues into McDonald's. All right, let's see what happens here. Whoops, that doesn't need that. Continue. It's at McDonald's. Uh, Seagal approaches the counter, scanning the menu. His stomach grows as he <laughs> growls as he decides what to order. He sells on a Big Mac, fries, and a large Coke. As he waits for the food, he notes a group of suspicious looking individuals. Of course there are. In the corner of the restaurants, they're dressed in dark clothing, whispering to each other. What is this, a tavern? <laughs> Seagal <laughs> looks <laughs> to the camera and, <laughs> and sighs. I'm I want to see what the AI does right here. Seagal, with a nod to the cashier, takes his tray of food and heads towards a suspicious group. They notice him approaching him and tense up. Glancing at each other nervously, Seagal sits down across from them, his eyes fixed on their leader. The leader clears his throat and speaks up. We don't want any trouble, sir. We're just having a bite to eat. <laughs> Seagal's pressure remains unchanged. Okay. Uh, minutes later, Seagal finishes his burger. Uh, he then stands up, tipping accidentally. <laughs> tipping. Whoops. Accidentally, sorry guys, accidentally tipping over the table, knocking with his belly, his his food uh, falling, spilling all over the floor. The gall slowly turns his eye, uh, his turns to the suspicious group to his left and mumbles <laughs> look what you made me do <laughs> I hope it continues this oh god minutes later so call case the suspicious group jumps up knocking over their chairs in their haste to leave they rush out to McDonald's leaving Sigal alone with their half eaten meal Sigal shrugs and sinks back down and finishes his fries. No actually what what I'll do here is this I'm going to take away um, – what? He overhears a conversation. I'm going to skip – I'm going to take that part out. Seagal like smiles, walks over to the abandoned table, sits down, and starts <laughs> munching <laughs> on their leftover food. An hour and a half later, the colonel is asleep on the bench outside. Several people 
walk by, giving him change, thinking he is homeless. Seagal finally leaves the McDonald's. Patting his belly in satisfaction. Seagal notices the colonel and taps him on the head. The colonel bolts up and shouts, It was it wasn't it wasn't me, honey. All right, let's see what the AI does here. I want to see the AI knows he's drink or you know he's dreaming or whatever. No, I, I think that's pretty funny. Sigal chuckles and says, "Easy there, Colonel. I just came from the getting a bite to eat." The Colonel rubs his eyes, looks at go confused. You were gone for like an all time. I thought you got caught up in something. Sigal shrugs and says, "Nah, just a suspicious looking character. I don't want to keep an eye on." But they left before things could get <laughs> things could get interesting. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, the colonel notices the pile of change <laughs> next on the bench. Seagal sees the change and says, that's more than this movie's budget. <laughs> The colonel chuckles, and the two of them stand up, ready to continue their mission. Seagal suggests they pay a visit to Nut's headquarters to get some answers around the hired mercenaries. The colonel agrees, and they make their way to the uh, waiting helicopter. As they fly over the Texas landscape, Seagal can't help but feel a pang of nostalgia for his action movie days. Upon arriving at N... So we're at f almost 5,000 out of 8,000 tokens. Just wondering what this N here is. I don't know if I on a hundred characters. That's definitely is that a hundred characters? Whatever. Okay, so let's say continue. Oh no. Okay, sorry. Yeah, in Nuts headquarters. The Gaul and the Colonel find themselves facing heavily guarded comp. That is quick. Uh, let's. Step that back a bit. I'm going to... The Colonel agrees to stand up ready to continue their mission. Seagal suggests that they pay a visit to the Nuts headquarters. See, I don't want them to know where Nuts is. I want them to go to um, the FART, which is the Federal Agency for Safety and Terrible. So just they pay a visit to their old... Um, their old friends at FART. to gather more intel on the whereabouts of nuts. Let's see if the AI pulls this story card. The Colonel Mantis and Grimm and the two of them make their way to the FART headquarters. As they approach, they see a group of pe people gathered outside arguing uh, heatedly. Seagal recognizes some of them as former Air Force pilots, part of Denver Verd Class of retired Air Force pilots, the Colonel, revered class of Air, yeah, it's a class. The Colonel explains that they've been having issues with rogue faction of pilots that have broken off away from FA. For fart, and formed their own group, calling themselves the Sky Raiders. Um, I'm not really a fan of this little subplot. Let's do this. I know it's like all movies have a lot of subplots and that go nowhere, but. Uh, as they approach, they see a group of people. Art headquarters. The two make their way to Art headquarters. Okay. Seagal and the Colonel. Uh, so Colonel. Enter their personal. Helicopter. Whoops. Personal. Ah, sorry. Personal. Helicopter. 
that was conveniently. That was, uh, let's see, conveniently off screen and fly and take off. The helicopter struggles to take off after Seagal's McDonald, uh, hefty meal. Oh, hearty meal is actually a good one too. Let's see how this goes. As the helicopter soars through the air, Seagal, oh, come on. It didn't, oh, whatever. Gates out the window, his mind racing with through the thoughts of nuts and their potential plans. So updates him on Fart's latest intelligence. <laughs> Seagal stomach growls again, interrupting their conversation. Carl chops in a granola bar from his pocket. Another stomach growl? <laughs> okay, whatever. As Seagal uh, snacks away, oops, the colonel explains to Seagal. Oh, actually, let's do this. The, the colonel shows Seagal a folder of documents that is the latest intel from FART. It reads that Nuts is setting up warships surrounding the uh, setting up warships on the Atlantic coastline. Whoops. Coastline. Uh, Seagal scans the document's expression darkening as he takes in the information. We need to X fast, he says, crumpling the empty granola bar wrapper in the hands. The colonel nods agreement, and they make a plan to infiltrate the nuts warship and take down that organization once and for all. Um, wait a second. Uh, is the nuts setting up a warship? Uh, that's my fault. I did not clarify how many warships. So, setting up a line of hundreds of warships on the Atlantic coastline. Let's try that. So he all looks at the document with a furred brow, his mind racing with potential plans. He turns to the colonel. We need to investigate this immediately. The colonel nods and the, do and the helicopter changes course towards the Atlantic coastline. As he approach, oh, so we're not gonna go too far, whatever. As they approach the coast, the Golden Colonel spot a massive fleet of warships lined up on the horizon. Ships are flying the nuts flag. A skull with a nut where the eye should be. <laughs> All right. Let's say Bart will have to... Okay. Uh, let's see. The Colonel says, but what about Fart? I mean, this is a Seagal movie. It doesn't have to be coherent. So our response, well, do a fart later. Right now, we need to focus on the stopping nuts. Helicopter <laughs> lands on the, near, the nearest warship. So, I'm surprised they just let them walk right in. Seagal will kind of make their way towards the bridge. The encounter several guards and Seagal takes them down with ease. Each of the same move a flailing his arms around with a weird expression on his face. Yeah. So that one right there is a new one to my list. Um, but... It's right here. So let's see. Seagal has a partner who eventually dies. Seagal movie pilot. Seagal movie plots are incoherent. Um, Seagal sometimes tries other accents but fails miserably. Fighting style just flailing his arms around with a weird expression on his face. It, it just kind of replicated. So um, I didn't want them to get to to get to the um, just land on the warship without, you know, taking heavy fire in the sky. So let's, I'm going to change just some of this. So if we were supposed to go to fart, a uh, folded documents that is nuts, take that out. Source of the air, so God gets out the window, there's mind racing, thoughts of nuts and the potential plans, updates him on fart, latest intelligence, but Seagal, here. I do apologize, I keep 
editing this, but I do want it to go a certain route. Uh, interrupting their conversation. Okay, so the colonel updates him on FART's newest airship of operations, where they will be headed. That is more like it. Like from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., the big giant airship, or like from Mar uh, the Marvel movies. Um, the helicopter lands on the deck of the massive FART airship. Seagal and the colonel step out, greeted by the crew. Seagal with a signature overcoat and layers of clothing look out of place <laughs> amidst the sleek technology. They make their way to the control where FART team has gathered information on nuts. <laughs> okay, Seagal walks up to the head of FART. Commander, Commander, Ga uh, Commander Gas. Let's see what Commander Gas two S's. That turns to Seagal and smiles. Hello, old friend. <laughs> nice to see you still sport the usual attire, no matter the season. <laughs> so we have Colonel Benson and then Commander Gas. So you all nods to Commander Gas and responds, always ready for the action. That's me. The FART team that, <laughs> that presents a goal of the information they gathered on Nuts. The team reveals that Nuts has been linked to a string of international incidents and the latest plan is a steel top secret government weapon. All right. Let's see. Uh, a top secret government weapon. Colonel Benson whispers to Seagal, I feel very out of place here. Perhaps I should head back to the Air Force, Air Force Command. All right. Seagal so nods, understand the Colonel's settlement. I'll continue the investigation here. You should get back to your, to your duties. The Colonel nods and gives Seagal a firm handshake before leaving the airship. Seagal turns his attention back to the fart team. Where is Nuts planning to steal his weapon? <laughs> well, let's see. Uh, Gas sits down <laughs> and accidentally, I know this is childish humor, rips one. He follows, he smirks and says, sorry, free bean salad. <laughs> I'm just curious if this will even work. Let's see how the AI interprets it. So y'all raise his eyebrow, but it says nothing. The FART team shows him a map of the location of the plan highest, a secret government facility in the desert, Nevada desert. So y'all knows, I'll, I'll need to get there quickly. Gas smiles and says, we have a fighter jet ready for you. It's one of the best. Oh, yay, we get to go to... Uh, let's see, what movie was that? Flight of Fury. Uh, let's see, steal the weapon. Sits down, I say rips one. He smirks and says, sorry, three bean salad. Okay. Um, the Nuts team shows Seagal to the uh, docking bay and his fighter jet. An old F-16. So y'all approaches the fire jet, nodding to the fart team as he passes. <laughs> he takes a moment to survey the aircraft, his eyes scanning over the familiar shape of the F-16 despite its age. It looks well-maintained and ready for the action. Climbs into the cockpit. His multiple layers of clothing uh, rustling as they settle into the seat. One of the fart mechanics climbs up to the cockpit and tells Seagal some information about the, the jet, the fighter. Seagal, this, this F-16 has been customized to your weight, <laughs> to your weight standards. You shouldn't have any departure 
you shouldn't have any issues on takeoff. You read? You copy? As he shouts over the uh, fighter engine. Excuse me. Excuse me. Sorry about that. So he all nods and gives the mechanic a thumbs up and look at determination on his face. He starts up the engine. Oh, uh, that's my mistake. The engine's not even on yet. Let's correct that, shall we? One of the farm mechanics climbs up to the cockpit and tells Seagal some information about the fighter. Seagal, this X-16 has been customized. Let's take some things from the Flight of Fury movie. Customized has been upgraded with super advanced cloaking technology. You, When you press the big red button, your jet will be completely invisible for exactly 30 seconds. Use it wisely. And no, this isn't science fiction. Continue. The all nods understanding the instructions. Okay. The mechanic uh, steps down and walks away. The the cockpit, let's see, the cockpit, what do you call that? Um, the window, the, I don't know what it's called, the cockpit window closes. And Seagal starts up the fighter jet. The engine roars to a lift, to life. Seagal feels a surge of excitement as he taxis down the runway. He takes off soaring into the sky with a powerful thrust. The F-16 responds eagerly to his commands, and he can't help but feel a sense of nostalgia as he pushes the plane to its limits. As Seagal approaches the secret government facility in Nevada, he spots several suspicious vehicles parked outside. As he lands on air, we're clearly Area 51. As he lands in Area 51, Area 51. His F-16 comes to a halt. And the engine turns turns off. The window rolls open. And Seagal, Seagal stunned double, exits the craft. Seagal stunned double dressed in a similar overcoat and layers of clothing steps out of the fighter jet and surveys the area. He spots several armed guards surrounding the facility and all of them tense and alert. Without hesitation, he charges towards the nearest guard, foiling his arms around his trademark class. The guards try to defend themselves, but Seagal stunned double easily overpowers him and knocks him out cold. <laughs> several of the guards scream in innocence and shout at Seagal, telling him to stop to stop <laughs> they are friendlies <laughs> he's at the wrong facility that's basically what i'm trying to get out here <laughs> so all sudden one hesitates looking around in confusion he sees the other guards raising their hands in surrender and realizes the mistake he holsters his weapon approaches the guards apologizing for perfect understanding they they eye suspiciously below in the past <laughs> he makes his way entrance to the facility the captain on duty runs out of Area 51 and approaches Seagal. The stunt double takes a coffee break break off camera. The captain questions why Seagal is here. Seagal uh, mumbles. Let's see what Seagal says. Okay, the captain, um, let's see. I received intel of a potential threat in this facility, and I'm here to investigate. 
The captain nods, looking relieved. Oh, thank goodness. We've been on the high alert for days now. We, uh, we were worried it might be a false alarm. Sagal nods, expressed in serious. I need to see the security footage for the past few days. Is there a way I can access it? Uh, the, the captain reveals that several of their members, scientists, have gone rogue and claim to be with, with nuts. <laughs> they locked themselves in a top secret uh, vault at the very bottom of the base. Okay. All right. So Don nods, understand the serious of the situation. Take me to the vault, he says, his voice firm and confident. The captain nods and leads Sagal through the facility, past rows of armed guards and high-tech equipment. As they approach the vault, Sagal notices the heavily, it's heavily fortified with the thick steel doors and advanced security system. The captain explains the vault is designed to withstand even the most sophisticated attacks. Starts to ramble on about the design of the vault door. You see, this is a T-19 security altered blast door made to withstand stand, uh, even a nuclear blast. The maker is Bethesda. <laughs> Actually, uh, what was it? Vault? Vault Tech? Maker's Vault Tech. A now debunked company from the Eastern. Uh, let's see. Blah, blah, blah. The only real way to break through this thing is a inexplicable plot device. Sagal starts to ramble on about the design of the vault door. You see, this is a T-19 security ultra blaster made to made to withstand, not waistband, <laughs> withstand uh, even a nuclear blast. The maker is Vault Tech, a now debunked company, or defunct. Um, the only real way to break through this thing is is with uh, is with a in a special plot device. <laughs> okay. How's our context window here? Let's see. Oh, we're really getting up pretty fast. <clears throat> Sagal nods, turning his attention back to the task at hand. I need to get it inside the vault. Let's see. The captain looks hesitant. I'm not sure that's possible, Mr. Gull. We tried everything we can think of, but we can't seem to breach that vault. Expression thoughtful. Lead that to me. Steps forward, examining the vault. A pin pad is seen on the center of the vault, the vault door, with a four-pin combination. Sagal slowly enters four random numbers. Moments later, a a large hatch. Large sound of gears turning. Let's see. There is a large sound of a gear turning. And the doors, the blast doors suddenly start to open. <laughs> Just the four pin to go. That's all it is. <laughs> The captain looks in surprise at the blast doors slowly creak open, revealing the dimly lit vault behind. Sagal nods, a satisfied expression on his face. I have a way of gadgets. See steps forward entering the vault with the captain following, closing behind. Inside, they find several scientists dressed in a lab coats, working frantically at their station. Sagal scans the room, his eyes settling on a familiar face. Uh oh. The captain suddenly pulls out a gun and aims at Seagal's head with a Russian accent 
to follow. You shouldn't, you shouldn't trust everybody. You shouldn't trust everybody, Seagal. Mr. Seagal. Let me see how the AI does this one here. You shouldn't trust everybody, Mr. Seagal. This captain's betrayal takes Seagal by surprise, but he quickly regains his composure. He looks at the captain directly in his eye, a steely expression on his face. You're right, Captain, Seagal says, his voice low and dangerous. I shouldn't trust everyone. He glances around the room, taking in the layout and the positions of the other scientists. While the captain holds Seagal uh, at gunpoint, oops, the rest of the base's team runs in with machine guns all aimed at Seagal. Several of the, sci the, the nuts scientists start looking at the situation unfolding, speaking in Russian. The government uh, mumbles. So, nuts is working with Russians now. The scientists nod, confirming Seagal's suspicion. One of them speaks up. We are tired of the American government's control over our work. Nuts have promised us the freedom to explore our research without limitations. Seagal nods, understand. I see, but you realize that Nuts will only use, their, use you for their own gain, right? The scientists look at each other, unsure. The captain yells at Seagal to shut him up. Seagal crosses his arms and stares straight into the captain's soul. <laughs> I'm curious what it's going to do here. It's all fantasy now. The captain agitated by Seagal's combinator, cocks the gun ready to shoot. Seagal remains unfazed, his gaze never wavering. Captain, go ahead, Captain. I face worse than you. The room falls silent. The tension's palpable. Suddenly, Seagal's stun double bursts into the room, guns blazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I, I'm trying to catch a breath. Uh, okay, Seagal's stunt double driving in a uh, rigged out Hummer blast through the armed uh, armed guards and runs over the captain. The Hummer crashes into the vault door, crashing, causing it to buckle. The, uh, Seagal takes advantage of the chaos to disarm the remaining guards to secure the area. He turns to the rogue scientist, his gaze turned. He made the wrong choice, he says, his voice filled with disappointment. The scientists look at Jordan, realizing draw, uh, dying on their faces. Seagal motions for them to step away from the workstations. Several of the scientists kneel down, bowing to their new lord and savior, <laughs> Steven Seagal. They speak in Russian, apologizing to Seagal. Seagal attempts to speak back in them with a Russian accent. Seagal stumbles over the rush of first, but the scientists seem to understand and nod in gratitude. Seagal turns to the entrance of the vault where his stunt double stands, panting and covering his sweat. Seagal nods approvingly. Good work, he says. His voice <laughs> deep and gravely. The, the stunt double grins, plays himself. Seagal turns back to the scientist. Seagal uh, lets the scientists go and starts and then gets a phone call from Fart, Fart's commander. Gets a uh, video call from Fart's commander. 
Commander Gas appears on the video call looking grave. Sagal, we have a problem. Nuts has launched a coordinated attack on several government facilities across the country. We believe they're trying to st uh, steal top secret technology. Sagal nods, understand the gravity of the situation. I'll head back to Fart. Here, I'm going to, uh, I have to cut this video short here in a second. Here's what I'm going to do. I never really plan on doing these continuously in different parts. I just want to do each video of Seagal in a different adventure. So we'll end this here uh, rather quickly. So Seagal nods and says to the commander, no worries. No worries, Gas. I've got all my stunt doubles guarding each and every government agency building. Seconds later, a flashing beacon, flashing light, uh, green light, is seen on Gas's face. Gas looks surprised and says, Seagal, it appears that Nuts has, has surrendered somehow. In the background of the video call, lot, uh, the fart team is cheering. Okay. Seagal smiles. <clears throat> Seagal nods and says, good work, men. I'll take it from here. He turns to the camera, the term expression on his face. Nuts may have thought they could have taken on the United States, but they have other of the power of Steven Seagal. He pauses for a moment, then adds, and my stunt doubles, of course. <laughs> there we go. I like that ending, actually. He turns to the camera, and that camera, that's a good one. I like that little... Um, fourth wall there so uh there you go that's been uh, attack force and it was um yeah i really liked it. this was this was hilarious this was this was a little longer than the last one at least uh context wise like jumping around different locations um but yeah that was really good i do like how this yeah uh, this i think the new instructions i have worked out pretty well uh it did go on little side quests at times but i tried to you know keep it keep the keep driving it steadily so i uh, hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see you next time on 830 rpg